All right, fellow 3400 engine owners. I have a bad head gasket in this Aztec. And the reason I know it's a bad head gasket is because I, after I let it run for a while, bleed the bleeders right here, there, there's another bleeder over here. But after I let the uh, air bleed out of the system, you know, let water come flowing through, and then tighten it back up, you know, I'll have heat inside for a little bit, and then it goes away. A lot of people experience these problems with the 3400 engine, and uh, sometimes it's the intake manifold gasket, other times it is the head gasket. And my recommendation is, if you're in there doing the intake manifold gasket, you might as well just go ahead and get the head gaskets done too. Not a whole lot more work. Yes, it's going to be a little bit more, but they're eventually going to fail anyway, so you might as well just get it done. So, yes, it's kind of a job. I don't really have a whole lot of uh, um, oil mixing with the water mixing with the oil. Uh, as you can see, you can kind of see some telltale signs of where it's overheated there and no it's not the thermometer or the water pump and anything I can get it to flow through there and everything except it just loses pressure and the reason it loses pressure is because the head gasket is bad and has failed so I'm gonna rip this thing all off this is gonna be a tutorial on how to get through this and tear it all down and get done so it's probably gonna be a little bit lengthy but certainly gonna be worth it if you've had this problem um, I'm going to show you some of the tools that I'm going to be working with here. Uh, actually, <laughs> if you buy your own tools and can get this job done yourself, or if you already have your tools, you're saving yourself an enormous amount of money because most shops are going to want $1,200 to $2,000 to do this job, and it's a lot of money. And actually buying the tools yourself is cheaper than paying somebody to do this amount of labor. The parts themselves are pretty cheap. You know, you can get the intake manifold gasket, the uh, head gaskets, and all the parts you're going to need for, I'd say, about $250 to $300. And then, let's say, at most, you're going to have another three to $400 in the tools that you're going to be able to keep forever. So, yeah, you're going to be well under the $1,200 of what somebody's going to want to charge to do this. Even if you can get somebody to do the labor for three to four hundred dollars, you're still looking at all the parts, which is basically the price of buying your own tools. You're just gonna be out your time. But let's get started, I guess. Start unplugging everything. The reason I know I'm losing pressure is because after I bleed it and turn the engine off, I'm hearing a. You can put your ear down here, you know, and listen for it, and you'll kind of hear like a hissing sound or you know the telltale sign also would be uh, water or another thing you can do is um, you know after you let it cool down and everything you know take the vent cap off and uh, you know see if you have gas gases escaping uh, but yeah these 3400s do have uh, head gasket problems um, after a while some here's got about 150,000 miles I'm gonna replace it with some good Felpro stuff and this engine should last for another 150,000 miles. Did all the rest of the tune-up already on it. Spark plugs, wires, you know. You keep these things maintained and after the gaskets are fixed, they're pretty good engines and they should hold together for quite a while. Okay, so I got everything set up. Got my stove on. Uh, gonna go ahead and take this out. Gonna jack it up, put it on jack stands. I'm going to take the battery box out. There's a 10 millimeter bolt back here holding it on. And we'll take this brace out right here. There's a two 10 millimeter bolts down here and a 13 millimeter bolt all the way back down there where my finger's pointing. There's three bolts holding the washer fluid reservoir on and then take out the um, bolts that hold the uh, battery cables on onto the battery. Those are two 8 millimeter bolts. And then there's a 13 millimeter bolt that goes straight down that holds the... Um, battery in place. So I'm going to get all that taken off, jacked up, come back from there. Alright, I've went ahead and removed that bolt that's right there. There's another one for the reservoir down there. Another one that's right below here. Um, right now I'm 
in here, below there. And then there's another one all the way back. Uh, let's see if I can get it in there. Right back there. It, there it is. Yep. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and unplug this uh, plug right here. Take out some of these clips so this here will be able to pull out and move away from it. I've already got the battery out. I've got the reservoir out. Got it up on jack stand so it's easier to uh, maneuver around in here. So, next step, unplugging some stuff and uh, pulling this out. Alright, so I got the battery box moved out of the way. Next thing to do is to unfasten the 13 millimeter bolt that uh, holds the power cable onto the alternator. Uh, disconnect the um, wires back here, the one to the uh, O2 sensor, the uh, one on the side of this side of the um, um, distributor ignition system, your MAP sensor, disconnect all that. Uh, disconnect the wires going to the EVAP system and then all the um, throttle uh, um, plug-ins and such over here. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect all the wires and then pull this loom out of the way so I can just uh, get it out of the way. So now we're just going to disconnect all the electrical. All right, here we have our basic electrical connection right here. All the connections that go to the back of the engine and everything there. Next thing I'm going to do is disconnect the uh, spark plug wires up front here. The firing order for this 3400 is, that's not necessarily the firing order, but the um, uh, cylinder numbers are 2, then going back here in the middle in the front, four, six. So it's two, four, six. And then in the back, it's one, three, five. One, three, five. Two, four, six. So uh, on the back of your um, ignition module, it'll also show you the um, firing order and uh, as to which cylinder it goes to. And uh, after I get the DIS system pulled out, I'll show you the back of that so you can see the firing order for it. So now I'm going to pull out the uh, wires. Uh, for the uh, spark and spark plug wires. Let's see, I'm also going to uh, disconnect the um, throttle bracket here and then take out the um, uh, elbow for the air breather. Get that all out of the way. And then uh, soon I'll take out these mounts right here. And then uh, start taking out this uh, upper intake. And then um, I'm going to take out the uh, serpentine belt here out here in a minute. But for now, take out the wires take out that bracket and then uh, pick up from there. Alright, next step is what I'm going to do. Now that i got all the spark plug wires disconnected from the DIS system and everything unplugged, I'm going to take out those two 10 millimeter bolts that hold it up here on the top and then there's a couple 13 millimeter bolts um, that you'll need a long socket for for in the back. And um, I'm also going to take out the uh, serpentine belt. Uh, as you can see down there, it also takes us a 3 8 drive on the idler pulley and then uh, just pull up a little bit on it and then the uh, serpentine belt will come off of there. And as you can see, I've already got the uh, uh, throttle cable bracket off there and the air box removed. Um, and then there's also a 10 millimeter bolt that holds on the EVAP canister right there. And as you can see, this is where the um, vacuum line goes to it. So I'm going to remove all of that and then pick up from there. DIS EVAP canister 10 millimeter uh, bolt right there. I'm not going to take out the um, EGR quite yet. And the serpentine. Alright, now that I got the uh, DIS system disconnected, I'm going to disconnect this here map sensor. And then there's three 15 millimeter bolts that's going to hold the alternator on, and that's going to let all this stuff here come out. And then we'll get to the power steering pump. And then also, like I said, the uh, EGR valve there as well. But as you can see, we've made some quite a bit of progress, and uh, it ain't even dark out yet. So I think I'm going to have this thing all tore apart here in one night. Moving along nicely. Like I said, now it comes off the map sensor and the alternator. And then we'll take off the alternator bracket here in a minute after all the extra stuff's taken off there. So I have three 15 millimeter bolts that are going to hold that alternator bracket on there along with the uh, idler pulley. Alright, off is the map sensor and 
As you can see there, there's where it goes to the fuel pressure regulator. It mounted up back there. There's the EVAP system I just left the hose on, so it's uh, easy to know where it's all going back onto. All right, next comes off the alternator. And here's where all the firing order and coil packs go to for the 3400. It's five, it's the first one, two, three, six, four, one, and then just flip back and you can refer to as which cylinder is what just a second ago. As you can see, there's three bolts that are holding on the alternator mount. There's this whole bracket that uh, is right here. You're going to remove this bolt, 15, that bolt right down there, there's a 15, and then this one here. So there'll be three of them, that, that, that. All right, now I'm going to remove the 5 8 nut that holds the um, high pressure line onto the power steering there. Remove the three 13 millimeter bolts that go through um, those holes there. You just spin the um, uh, power steering pump around enough to where you can get to those three 13 bolts and they'll just pull out to the front. And then there's a uh, alligator clamp that you'll need to uh, screw out and uh, remove the low pressure line off the power steering pump and then I'm going to pull that thing out. So next comes off the power steering. Okay, the power steering is off there. Next thing I'm going to do is start disconnecting some of these um, coolant lines. Like here, there's an 8mm that goes down there. And then um, remove these brackets right here. Take off the belt and uh, take off that part for the uh, thermostat. Take off these clamps that go down that way. And there is a bracket that you can see down here that you'll need to remove a uh, either 10 or 13, I can't remember which, uh, bolt from there. And then you'll just pull this whole uh, line up and out. I'm going to take out the uh, drain um, plug for the oil pan, drain out the oil, and then also disconnect the um, hose down here that goes to the water pump so the um, uh, coolant can uh, drain as well. And then... Um, after I get done with that, I'm going to move over here to the uh, EGR valve and disconnect it. Also, there is a 13mm uh, bolt in the back uh, that holds on the uh, transmission uh, dip stick here as well. So, next thing I'm going to do is all that, and then I'll get working on taking off this uh, upper intake. Okay, I got the tube taken off there, the motor mounts off. See, I've also got the um, bolts taken out for the uh, EGR there, so this here is free to move around. Now I can take off the uh, upper intake. Not too many bolts holding it on there, just a few 10 millimeter bolts, and uh, this will be able to be pulled off here. Then I'll start working on the lower intake and taking off the valve covers. Okay, the upper intake is off there. So now I'm going to take out the eight bolts that hold on the uh, um, lower intake manifold. There's bolts down there. Another bolt through here. And then bolts that go straight up and down through here. I'll just leave the uh, fuel rail connected to it and then just set this off to the side. And then uh, start working on the heads. Take out these uh, brackets and everything. Um, take out the uh, valve covers also. So that's going to be my next step. Valve covers. Um, and the uh, lower intake manifold. And I'll worry on about um, taking out these brackets. Also, back here, there's a 10 millimeter bolt that goes down that holds on that um, uh, fuel rail there. And then there's also a uh, 13 millimeter bolt. Then a, uh, I think it's a uh, 15 millimeter bolt that will hold on that um, water passage that goes into the back of the water neck there. So you can uh, just pop it out pull it out and then uh, set it aside there too. So that's what I'm going to work on next and then come back to the... Alright, as you can see I've got the intake manifold off here. Um, there's the intake just set aside right there. Next thing I'm going to do is remove the rocker arms and keep them all in order so I know where they all go. And uh, remove the uh, rocker arms, the push rods, and the intake manifold gasket right there. 
and then uh, I'll start working on my heads after that. So I think I'll go ahead and remove these uh, brackets, this bracket, and then this bracket over here as well. So next step, let's take off those rockers, push rods. All right, as you can see, I've got the engine mount bracket off there. I had to remove the uh, air compressor in order to get that off because that was holding the head on. This uh, piece it sits inside that stud right there, so you got to kind of work it back and forth to get that thing loose. Next thing I'm going to have to do is remove the uh, oil dipstick by removing that bolt there. I had to remove the uh, exhaust from underneath the uh, car. So now I'm going to start taking out the wires uh, uh, for the uh, back spark plug back there and um, start removing the head bolts. Should be ready to pull out of there. I'm going to try and pull the whole thing out as one piece and then take the uh, crossover out once it's out, but I mean, if I can't get it like that, then I may have to remove this uh, crossover, but first I'm going to remove all these bolts here, so uh, let's see how that does, see what happens once I remove all these bolts and uh, try and pry it loose. So, got pretty far, as you can see, we're not too far in, uh, and it's still the same night, so I think you could probably get this done in a day if you kept at it. So. A lot of work. Let's keep working. All right, I got my heads off. As you can see, I took all the 15 uh, millimeter bolts out of there, and um, as you can see, I did break off one of the bolts on the uh, exhaust there, but no big deal. Got everything pulled out of there. I can see the gasket right there where it failed. That's one of the water jackets right there and it failed right there. As you can see, it's all laid up. It's even broken this one spot right there. You can kind of see the crack right down there. Um, you have this uh, one spot right there, and that's exactly where I was kind of hearing it going, you know, losing, uh, losing pressure. Uh, the back one's not terrible bad, but it does have one that's, uh, you know, bad back here as you can see but uh now it's time to get everything cleaned up polished off sanded down cleaned 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 and then uh, put the uh, new manifold gaskets on there head gaskets on there and start getting it all bolted back together i think i'm going to bolt the uh, heads down to uh, 70 pounds and then uh, just kind of hand tighten I kind of got a feel for how bad it is stupid compressor alright next stop heads go back on here after everything's cleaned up I'll make a video whenever I got everything cleaned up but, uh, here's all my uh, here's my buddy Corey what's up man get yeah done. get the job done get her done get it done get her done there's the lower intake manifold. There. All my parts over here. Oh my gosh, what did I get myself into? All my bolts and everything. Got everything ready to go back together. Got everything in uh, its own certain pile. So let's see how, uh, see how it goes back together. I think I'm going to make this part one of two. And then I'll start bolting everything back in in part two so stay tuned i'm sure we're gonna get this thing back up and running correctly so let's see how we do i'm gonna take these uh head gaskets off here and make a quick video and just show you how bad and again this is the um front head gasket and you can see right there where it failed right where my thumb is you can see this uh is broken right there this is starting to delaminate there. Oh yeah, real bad coming apart here in the back. Look at that, all peeling apart. Ooh, real bad back there too. Yeah, this head gasket was shot. So yeah, attention 3,400 owners, 3,100 liter owners. You're gonna wind up probably having to do one of these jobs eventually. It's not the worst job, but uh, it is time consuming as you can see by the uh, video I've made. So if you got any questions, let me know. I'll try and get your car put back together with a little assistance and um, hopefully solve your overheating issues. This obviously 
is the overheating issue I'm having on mine. If you're having overheating issues that you can't fix by turning out the bleeder, guess what? Yep. <laughs>